kids being bullied, sometimes to death. Holding its second summit to combat bullying. It is a nationwide problem. It's found 42% of kids have been bullied while surfing the web. Tonight, did the school do enough to protect her from the bullying? It's heartbreaking. Police say there is zero tolerance for this. Uh, I would say for the overwhelming majority of my life, it hadn't impacted it at all. I really uh, had not known anyone uh, who, who had been down that road uh, and, and had not given it a great deal of thought, was aware of it, but had not given it a great deal of thought. Uh, now, over the last three to five years, unfortunately, you know, both here at our school, uh, within our school community, uh, and in my own, you know, personal journey of life, I, I've unfortunately encountered it now more than I'd like to. There are a lot of things in life that aren't good, they're bad, but you can, you can turn back and you can recover and you can move forward. That, that's not the way it works with suicide. So I think my first thought is always one of deep sadness. There's just all these emotions that come over you, like you feel, you feel mad, you're obviously hurt, you're sad and you feel a little bit guilty at the same time because you feel like you could have done something. I feel like in the growing tide, people are just being more rude and hateful. It's like people will say it's easier to be rude than nice. And I do believe social media has something to do with it because you are able to cyber bullet. You're allowed to sit behind a computer and just insult somebody for no reason. But I will tell you, we have probably fewer policies than most schools because I just don't think policies solve problems, people solve problems. Every day we hear more and more about bullying and suicide. And now, as students and teachers become more aware of these subjects, what actions are they taking to help prevent it from happening in their communities? You know, don't signal someone out because of something that they, that they have or they don't have or something like that. The breaking down of you know, like uh, classes, like the class system, you know, like there's the jocks and there's the emos, and, you know, and, you know, anybody can hang out with anybody. You can have a jock hanging out with the band kid. You can have a choir kid hanging out with the popular kids in school, you know. And I, the breaking down those barriers is a very important part that could help prevent suicide. It obviously becomes more in our face than it was 25 years ago when you couldn't. You know, you just, the communication systems weren't what they were. My guess is there was a fair amount of suicide 25 years ago. Nobody ever heard about it. You know, if it happened, the immediate family, some friends, but it didn't get posted on Facebook. It didn't go to Twitter. Uh, it didn't go on the internet. Like, because I've been through it before. I've seen what it can do to people and it's, it's horrible. Express how you feel about the situation. Talk about it, how you're being bullied, what's the cause of it. That way we can move forward with helping people getting them out of that situation. Like, my friends, my family, they got me out of Martinsville, they got me here. That's what I recommend, get out. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're a student, teacher, or faculty member, you have the power to make a difference. Together, as a school body, we have the chance to put an end to bullying, because what it comes down to is making sure that somebody lives to see another day. My job is to be your eyes, ears, nose, the five senses. I'm supposed to bring those to you. But if you put the camera down and you kind of look at what it is, it, it can overwhelm you sometimes. The dead bodies, the car crashes, the burning houses. Some things you see in the business, they're for these eyes only. Every day, consumers tune into the news to see what is happening in our world today. The news will air stories that they think have to be told. But what about the stories that aren't? Graphic, uh, you know, bloody things. Um, we have at the Indy Star a, for lack of a better word, a, a dead body rule. We don't show blood. We don't show bodies, even though, I mean, they're there. They're covering a murder. There's a dead guy. There's a dead guy. There has to be a body. What we try to do is to be sensitive to the viewers sitting at home and don't want to show them an image that is too jarring, yet still give them an accurate portrayal of what is going on. Facts that they want. But the thing is that society doesn't see the impact a story has on a person. They don't see the emotional toll that goes into bringing them these stories. So as a journalist, you have to be as objective as you can um, and at the same time convey that emotion, right? I think uh, for me, and I've only broken down a couple of times on air, um, but it's because I'm thinking so much about it when I'm giving a story. And so I think what you do is you, you tell that story, you're compassionate, 
Um, and that's another thing I do. I put myself in the place of the people that are there. You're compassionate in your telling, and then you go home and you do whatever you can to fill yourself with positive uh, images. Um, I mean, I all I do is go to comedies. You just file it back. You How you recover from seeing traumatic things and having tough experiences happen, you just file them back. You recover and you have to have a very strong core of what you believe in, which obviously I do. You believe in ethics, you believe in the morality of it, you believe in doing the right thing. The thing to take away is that the news will filter details that our society doesn't need to see. The media, whether it's on your TV or on your kitchen table, will bring you stories that you need to see. Journalists will bring you information that isn't biased and brings you up to speed on what's happening in our society. They cut things out because oftentimes they are safer if seen by these eyes only.